Hi guys and welcome to another Waterton Studios video. This is going to be how to paint your model windscreens part 2. In part 1 we painted up this chunky little military vehicle. As you can see we put a simple fade on the windscreens. We picked out the little speculars with little corner pieces. And I approached this as if I painted the model first and then thought about the windscreen as an afterthought. On these, I'm going to be painting this as I would, you know, a model I've pre planned out. So I'm going to do the windscreens first, so I'll do all the glass work first, then mask it off and go back to the rest of the vehicle. So the car's getting done in like a, a dark blue candy, the, the pair of them are. So I'm going to go for an orange on the windscreens and I'm going to go for something a little more advanced than the simple fade. I'm going to go for a bit of an environment reflection, sort of just reflecting a little bit of the environment. Now I've been looking online to see what other people are doing and I'm not really finding very much along this line and yet it's, it's a lovely effect on a vehicle. So to achieve the first effect what I'm going to do is get a length of masking tape stick that down onto my worktop and I'm going to cut in a horizon line and I'm going to put on some random sort of curvy shapes that could be trees or bushes and I'm going to have some little flat areas and And I'm quite literally going to just stick this straight on. Something like that. Not overly fast. So let me get a little bit closer so we can see. I just have one continuous curvy line all around the vehicle. I'm not going to bother masking off the rest of the car. I'm not going to mask the roof. Because I already know when it comes to paint net, I'm going for a flat colour, so I'll be given a solid colour over everything else. I'm going to be using a dark primer. And I'm going to thin it down just a little bit. Now, I am going to be putting a fade on this, but instead of going from lightest to darkest, I'm going to be going on the top of the upper section, I'm going to be going from darkest to lightest, and on the bottom section, darkest to lightest. So my darkest of the dark side is going to be next to the lightest of the light side. And then I'm going to demask it. You can see I've gone for broken up areas here and a little bit here just because I don't want it to look like a very static horizon line kind of effect. You know, I just want to try and break it up and I'll do the same when I'm laying the colour over the top of everything. Now for this one I'm going to do virtually the same thing. Let's get some thinner masking tape. Let's lay out a strip or two. Thank you. 
and because the windscreen is curved I'm gonna lay these on transcribing a curve that should carry through to give us the effect of a curved windscreen reflecting a city skyline And I'm going to go back in with the black and I'm going to give this much more of a solid coating. And one last piece. And I'm going to go straight in with some white. Again, thin down a tiny little bit to that same old milky consistency that we always airbrush at. Right, with the white, what we want to do is lay in a fade to the top of the windows and we want to point out where sort of our point of light or the sun is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the sun here. And because these windscreens are curved, front and, the front and back shields are curved, I'm then going to also bring in the same point of light here and here. It's as if the sun's full from the side. So I'm going to get a little cut off piece of magazine, hold that up to the side, and just drop that in. Now, it's not overly obvious right now where that point of light is, but we're going to be dropping a color over the top of this. and then reinforcing that point of light. Now this is completely out of the light. So I'm just gonna put a little tickle on that top edge. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same here. Light it on the top. I'm going to have it lit from the same side. Now I'm going to curve this a little. I'll turn this on its side. I'm going to curve the paper a little, which then allows me to transcribe one way or the other a curve in my stencil. Here we'll do it right there. Here we'll do it. Right there. Just put some interest in these bottom areas. Let's 
system here. I'd say that looks lovely. You can see this is a lot more faded. And this is a lot sharper and crisper. I'm going for a dark blue with the car, so I'll be going for an orange. And plain and simple, I'm just going to lay that straight over the top. So as you can see, because we're using a transparent paint, the blacks pretty much are remaining black and they're not been hidden if you like by yeah if I was using an opaque paint so I'm just going over to get a nice strong quite bold orange finish on this and then without cleaning out my cup I'm going to throw in uh, a nice reddish brown, almost a walnut. This is burnt sienna. And I'm going to use that to start laying on a gradient. Because of the effect of contrast between the slightly darker and the slightly brighter oranges, it makes the orange look orangier, even though in actual fact well, we've done exactly the opposite and made the orange less orangey. So I'm going to load up a lot more white and I'm going to start on this one and I'm going to go back in and lay in that point of light which we decided was going to be on this side didn't we nothing but a little hint of it on the other side and the same one here but I'm just gonna mask off with my finger And then on the dark side, the K 
out the little points just to catch the light. Lovely. We're now going to go back to the orange. I'm just going to mute those highlights down a little bit with the orangey brown. Now this is some straight up black model air. Lovely tiny tiny brushes at three O. And I'm just gonna put in some tiny little details. to break up the skyline and make it a little bit less just to break up the skyline and make it a little bit less uh, uh, samey I suppose Just keeping it subtle. And we're going to do the same on this one. I'm just uh, rolling my cardboard. Just enable me to get some sharp, but still a little bit of a curve in them bends. And what we're going to start doing is laying in the edges of the windows. Just 
where the light sort of reflects off the bottoms a little better. can get awkward in places but it's just about persevering to get the effect you like ultimately what we have here is we're trying to avoid it looking like a we're trying to avoid it looking like a mirror So we're putting a little bit of sheen across all the windows. And yeah, to be a lot more blatant about it. your cardboard across to get very mechanical almost sheen lines and then finish that off with a bit of bottom-up reflection.
So there we have my two little windows. The more stylistic one and the more sort of naturalistic one. I'll quickly mask off these windows and then I'll fast forward while I just get a quick base coat on them so you can see them in context with the rest of the model. Okay, so uh, all that's left for us now is to get that masking off. pair of guys quickly sprayed up a pair of these to this level took about an hour and yeah I think that's uh, a quite an effective end result next step will to be get all the little details done There'll be a, a white panel on the top of each one with a number, a little badge on the door, paint off the lights, <laughs> wheels. But yeah, that's like donkey work of this is totally done. See two totally effective paint schemes. And hit with that gloss varnish, it just gives it an extra special look. Right, I hope you found this... Uh, Wow, intriguing if not useful. And happy painting.